Thank you for joining. I'm Sherry with Sunflowers and Petals, and today we are talking hill training and Eversting. If you like what you hear, be sure to like, hit the like button and also subscribe. I'm excited to have with me pro cyclist Lauren DiCrenzio. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Welcome, Lauren. <laughs> yeah, I'll get uh, DiCrenzio, like the musical, the, the energy. Yeah, I knew I wasn't going to get that right. I'm it's so tough. sorry. It's Italian. Going to call you Lauren D. <laughs> I go by Lauren D as well. Or yeah, Lauren D is good. <laughs> and I'm wearing the polka dotted jersey just for our discussion. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so you've competed in road racing, time trials, and most recently Everesting. Um, tell me a little bit about how you got into riding and your competitive cycling career. Yeah, so this started a long time ago. I I grew up in Colorado, in, like around Boulder, and I used to be a runner in high school, a cross country runner. So I've always been like into these like long distance events and like, just pushing myself these things. And eventually, as usually happens, I got hurt a couple times running, like with the shin splints and like a stress fracture. So I thought that cycling would be a great cross-training activity for cycling, but then it turned out that cycling ended up being way more fun for me than running because <laughs> I could go way faster and way further and do, and I could overtrain or overtrain. I could, it, it's hard to go for a five hour run as opposed to like on a, any Saturday, as opposed to like a five, you can go for a five hour ride. Like right. maybe once a week if you want. <laughs> so like it was always good for that part of my personality that wanted to, you know, push it further and further. Great. So you've overcome adversity after a terrible crash about five years ago that left you with a traumatic brain injury. How did you get back on the bike after something like that? Well, for me, it was actually harder to step away from the bike. I... I tried to stop. I was like, I can't do this anymore. This isn't good for me. I just was obviously all up in my head with, you know, being, I was in a rehab. So okay. So <laughs> in 2016, I crashed my bike really hard at the San Dimas Pro Stage Race um, in California. I was airlifted to the rehab center in Colorado. As I recovered at the rehab center, it was very, very difficult to even think about bikes again because of where it landed me yeah. but yeah but then I was I was released from the rehab uh, they let me they let me go <laughs> and I I try to step away from it but it's just like so it ended up being so ingrained in like my personality that I honestly I was like kind of bored not doing it <laughs> and it actually it was a great like um it was a great measuring stick for oh another story about it so <laughs> when I was at the rehab center um, professional other professional cyclists who'd gone through had a TBI before named T Timmy Dugan came to visit me which was really great he had a very severe TBI um, at the Tour of Georgia in 2009 or 2012 2012 mm. I think yeah 2012 and he he recovered fully he got back on the bike he won that the national championship after his TBI, and he went to the Olympics in uh, yeah in Beijing, yeah in uh, in 2012. So he had a very good recovery, and he said that I should use cycling as a measuring stick for my recovery from the TBI. Interesting. Yeah, it was really it was a good measuring stick. It was very like objective. I'm like, oh, I'm here today. Oh, now I'm here next day. It was great. Did you have balance issues? Um, it was more, those weren't as pronounced as some of the other issues. I think it was the region of my brain. Um, the balancing, I had people were keeping their eye out for me. People, people were, that I would like go ride with and stuff. Like they were making sure that I didn't crash again, because that's one of the worst things that can happen after you have a TBI is to get another TBI. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Oh yeah. People were watching out. They were keeping their eyes on me, but ended up being okay. <laughs> and I feel fully recovered now, at least. I think I, I think I used to have a fear of like descending at really high speeds and just 
being in groups of people, like groups of cyclists after it. But I think, I think I've got back to normal. <laughs> well, obviously you have, cause like I'm pretty normal right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, last year with the pandemic, Eversting has um, become like all the rage. Um, yeah. Explain what it is and why you think it became so popular. Right. Yeah. Uh, Everesting is crazy. So what you do is <laughs> you, the rules are you have to find one climb and you have to do repeats of this climb until you reach the elevation of Mount Everest, which is 29,029 feet. Wow. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was all the rage last year because it was 2020 and all the races were canceled and no one had any races to go to. <laughs> they were bored. They were looking for a challenge. Everyone was really <laughs> bored and everyone, fitness, I think, I didn't, I was part of some uh, Strava study. They, sh they were saying that fitness actually improved for most people, for <laughs> pro cyclists last year. <laughs> or in their study, the pro cyclists reported better fitness. Uh-huh. Yeah, so we're more fit, and then we just were challenging ourselves like to the nth degree with Everesting, and that was crazy. That was really really tough. We did it on I did it with my fiance Jim, um, and we found this climb called Hogpin Gap uh, in North Georgia, and we it's like nine point eight percent, about two point one miles long, and we just went up and down it, up and down it for ten hours. It was. <laughs> uh, better you than me <laughs> oh yeah our friends came out which was amazing it was a very it was a good socially distant activity with our friends because they were just like scattered along the climb um or at the top handing me red bull every lap oh wow <laughs> <laughs> there, i went to some pretty dark places in the everesting but made it out of the other on the other side okay well, congrats. And, and you did pretty well there. I understand you got a record? Yeah, I set the world record by a few minutes. <laughs> you say that so nonchalantly. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, yeah, I, I really like climbing a lot. <laughs> it was, well, since you uh, com completed the Everesting, you know, it really does require a lot of mental toughness. Not everybody has a group of friends to sit there and cheer them on all day. Um, how did you prepare both mentally and physically for such a demanding ride? Physically, I didn't do, really do anything besides train ever, train the way I'd been training for years and years and years because I love cycling. So I'm just out riding my bike because it's fun and it makes me happy. So I, you know, I was just doing the, doing the things, just riding my bike all the time. I only decided to do the Everesting about six days beforehand because, you know, everyone was doing it. It was like the new thing to do. And I was like, oh, haven't thought about that yet. And again, my fiance wanted to do it. He was doing it. He was raising money for a hospital in uh, Atlanta. And I thought that I wanted to do it for myself and raise money for a different charity, Craig Hospital, where I recovered from the traumatic brain injury. Oh, that's great. Way to give back. Yeah. Yeah. And it was sweet because the money was actually going towards, um, I, for COVID relief for them, because they weren't allowed to have visitors at the rehab center anymore. Wow. And yeah, from when I was there, I remember that was the only thing that got me through the day was having people visit me basically living at the hospital. Otherwise, I would have not. <laughs> they had to get me through the, the hospital stay. So yeah. I, yeah, the money went towards things like iPads and those sort of just like, yeah, getting people in touch with their friends and family. Well, that's a great way to give back. So every season I try to be stronger on hills. Uh, it's my nemesis. Um, besides improving the power to weight, power to weight ratio, um, are there any other techniques, training tips that you would give someone? Uh, I could probably go on for, I could probably write a book about this, <laughs> <laughs> how to be a better climber. I know there's all sorts of, uh, I'm being coached right now actually by Tom Danielson, um, cinch cycling coaching, and he, he did write a book about core exercises, but he, he, he is, his whole site has a whole bunch of tips on climbing, 
um, like bringing your weight forward more and like how to use your cadence on like the flatter parts, you need to increase your cadence versus on the elevated parts, you can kind of lower your cadence and go with the terrain. But personally, I think it's all in your head. <laughs> <laughs> going back to the it mental toughness <laughs> yeah it is because it was all in my head I figured out because before back to the TBI before the TBI I wasn't a great climber it was more I was like eh, I'm a I like the rolling terrain but now I love climbing and I think that the the TBI made me like put the whole pain of climbing into perspective and I was like this is like I'm uncomfortable, this sucks, but it's fine, whatever. It's not what I, it's not that. That's, this is much easier to deal with. Like wow. momentary pain versus that. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a great way to put it, yeah. Yeah, so I think it's like kind of concept, how you conceptualize a pain because it hurts no matter what you do. It's just how you deal with the pain. Yes. <laughs> so um, that's my existential answer to the question. <laughs> No, I think it's 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 really good because for the longest time I used to avoid hills and I've embraced them. In fact, this morning's ride, I went looking for hills, you know, and I'm not great on them, but I keep try trying. So I, I, I like your analogy, just a mm -hmm. short term pain. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the first, uh, I think my first ride, I went up Flagstaff Mountain, which is in Boulder. It's a very steep climb in Boulder. And I don't know why I thought I could do it. I remember being on like the steep section of it, walking my bicycle <laughs> and thinking, why did I, why did I do any of this? <laughs> <laughs> and now you climb it with ease, right? Yeah. Going from like having to walk my bike up a climb, like my first day as a cyclist to like setting a world record was very opposite. Very, <laughs> this is very far away at kind of climbing. <laughs> but very impressive. You've come a long way. Yes. So you work full-time at the CDC research as a fellow epidemiologist, um, mm -hmm. and you compete on the bike, and you train. How do you juggle work and training? I don't know. I, either I'm working, or I'm training, or I'm working, or I'm training. And it's very... Um, being surrounded by people that have like the same mindset, like I'm like Jim, my partner, my yeah, fiance, he's in medical school right now. So he's always studying and he loves riding. We met through cycling. So we're either training together or we're doing homework and working at the same time. And it's just like being surrounded by people with like a similar mindset of like training and like working is very helpful like keeping your eyes or just being focused on like the, what you're doing. Uh -huh. And sometimes we're, we do fun things every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> so Lauren, thank you so much for your time today. Um, what's the next cycling challenge on your radar? Ooh, well, we have some races. I hope we have some races coming up if they don't get I canceled. Think we will. I think we will. I think we will. I think my ne our next race is Unbound in Kansas, the 200 mile gravel adventure. Wow. Spread. <laughs> oh, so you don't, you don't just do road, you, you do gravel? Mm -mm. Oh, we do a little, yeah. Our team that Jim and I are both on, my dream came true, we're teammates now. So <laughs> we're on cinch cycling um, with Tom Danielson and he has, it's like our calendar is a mix of the big gravel events and the big road events. So I'm like a roadie gun gravel. <laughs> <laughs> It's nice well, to have the variety. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, I agree. So yeah, a little bit of that, probably some big road races and big gravel races. And getting married. That's the biggest I event. Know, that's calendar. exciting. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we wish you well. So thanks for watching another Sunflowers and Petals video. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button below and make sure to subscribe and enjoy the ride. Enjoy.